know everything Who in the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying But act like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche It's five and a horse, I'm ready for war I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost I need to know everything Now you be surprised at the info you get Is by letting them talk, so I'm letting them talk Gotta keep quiet, maneuver in science Then let them in talk up their body Another one body, that's just how it go I got some secrets, I'm shaking the game So they stay on their toes Stay in your lane, I to stay on the go I can't play with the pros And act like a rookie, so they overlook me Then I double up again, none of their nose None of them cold, they just got lucky But never adapted, so I'm to the one If it's coming to blows, my enemies cutting it close I let them think that they got me, but what do you know I had them beat before we ever spoke I'm ready for smoke I need to know everything, who in the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but act like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, it's five and a horse I'm ready for war, I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost I need to know everything Now they ain't go harder than me They need a blade and a sheath, a shank and a piece A crate full of heat, an army of fleet, a tank and a jeep A navy at sea, where they some my hey, I'm hanging with the boys, man, they're part of the team Team, can I tell you, team. <laughs> Welcome to Tampa Bay. We fuck them up when we raise the flag. Find the cannons and see today. The crew's ready. Oops. Hey, what is up? You guys are watching the Loose Cannons. I'm your host, Samer, hanging out with Stank. No Poppy Latte, unfortunately, this week. And a special guest from Real Bucks Talk, Dr. Pless. What's up, Pless? What's up, guys? How are we doing? Uh, What's pretty, up, Plus? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. We got uh, it's Victory Monday. We got the Victory Shades on. Bucks escape, if that sounds right. I guess the Bucks escape Tampa with a win against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, it wasn't pretty, but a win is a win is a fucking win. So I will absolutely take it. But a lot of people not very happy with it. Didn't feel uh, like a win. Didn't feel like a win. Didn't. Mm -hmm. It was. It was a bit weird. Um, but that's why we're here. We're going to talk about it. We're going to figure it out. We're going to give ourselves therapy and plus you break down film and I saw you were already doing that shit this morning. So maybe you have a little bit more insight we could talk about, but overall, mm -hmm. man, uh, what'd you think of yesterday's game? Well, positives. I mean, we won, like you said, a win's a win. doesn't matter if it's by an inch or a mile winning's winning fast and furious quote there. Um, so you know, you're, <laughs> you're in first place, uh, which is great. First place in the division. It's a division that we pretty much have control of, you know, going forward. When you look at the rest of the NFC South teams kind of in turmoil, you know, obviously Panthers fired their coach today. Uh, so they're going backwards saints. They're kind of up and down. And then you look at the team we beat yesterday again, a, uh, uh, a team that fights as far as like scrapping till the end, they're never going to give up. Uh, they made it closer than it was for most part, you know, up 21, nothing in the third quarter. You think you have it pretty much on lockdown, but yeah, I mean, there are some good things, uh, obviously getting the win, but you know, players, I, I really like Rashad white, Kate Otten, the rookies are stepping up in certain ways, uh, Logan hall making plays. So that was a good thing. Uh, defensively, Joe Tryon Shoenka looks really good. And I would like to see, more from him as far as pass rush, not dropping into coverage all the time. Uh, so there's just, there's certain things that were very good and obviously getting into the end zone more finding Mike Evans. Um, so there was, a, there were some positives there, but the negatives, I just see it coaching still holding us back as far as offensive play calling certain sequencing not making the execution easy for our guys, um, especially in that second half where you had multiple, you know, three and outs, um, you know, and kind of just let Atlanta crawl back into it. So, um, yeah, a lot of things to still work on, but there's still some positives there you can take from yesterday. And obviously getting the win while you're learning from those mistakes, that's always a good thing. You'd rather win and learn and, and move on. Yeah, I think what was most disappointing was the fact that they just took the energy out of the stadium in the, in the fourth quarter. And it just, oh God, all, all the positive just was wiped out. Brent out in the chat says it's so weird to think that we won. We're up on the season, but I don't think anyone has been satisfied with a single game this season. What's up, Brent? Yeah, exactly. I, it's, I mean, I, ex I, expectation, I expectations, the, expectations are higher, game. right? Expectations are high. I was satisfied with the saints game and the Cowboys game, honestly. So the first yeah. two wins of the season, 
but go ahead. I mean, yes, there's a lot of extenuating circumstances, injuries. Nobody wants to make the excuses. The hurricane, I think, was a factor. We came out flat as fuck and got steamrolled. There's a lot of things to, to point fingers at, um, you know, and people people are all over left which in this offense. I think that's that's been the thing I've seen as most consistent uh, as far as criticism concerned. Um, but I don't know. It just hasn't been overwhelmingly great and i thought we were gonna stomp a shithole in atlanta and it looked that way and then they you know what devin white said they took the foot off the gas they got complacent and good football teams don't do that well you know you know what i think what's happening is that we just haven't played a complete game yet we just haven't clicked and i think we're kind of passing right now on talent <clears throat> Also, like, capitalizing on mistakes. But, you know what? We can, like, pile on Byron like we have the last couple weeks. And I have, you know, in, in discussions with you, Stank, and Latte, and Pless, and even with Jake. But, like, at some point, you have to ask the guys who are on the field to execute. I mean, like, yeah. there's guys dropping passes. Tom Brady didn't look especially crisp at different times. He kind of looked, <laughs> um, I don't want to say disinterested, but... Uh, there were times where he just looked like he was not on the same page as wide receivers. He had a couple passes that looked like they were going to two guys in one spot. The Mike Evans pass where it like just plop popped. It looked like the ball exploded in the air. There's just weird little miscommunication things that are happening. And then, I mean, it, we can get on Byron all day about running the ball on first down, which when you actually look at the numbers, it's not as bad as we think it is. But, I mean, Lenny has the hole. There's holes for Lenny to run through, and that's not on Byron. If Byron, I don't think Lenny, like, I, I guess the that's, the, the, that's, the, the, that's the, not his fault. That's not Byron's fault if you don't hit the hole. If you don't get the fourth yards down run, the fourth down run was a bad decision. He tried. He was going to try to make some more out of it. He should have just taken. But that's the, not the, the only one though. There was another. No, he, play. I thought we I didn't think he looked ball. that bad, man. No, we hit. Really didn't think he looked that bad. There was a play we gave the ball to Lenny, and before Lenny barely even had possession of the ball, he bounced it outside and lost two yards. He didn't even look to see what was going to develop in front of him. He, he had it in his head he was going to bounce outside. And I say I have this love-hate relationship with this guy because at times you're like, fuck yeah, Lenny, there you, got, there you fucking go. And then other times you're like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Why are you stepping out of bounds? And I think it happens a little bit to him, kind of like A.J. Dillon I'm starting to see too when I watch their games. He tries to run you over with his quads as opposed to his actual shoulder pads. And then, like, it's just weird to me that the guy that that size plays so much like LeGarrette Blunt early in his career where he doesn't play to his size. And it's just frustrating. Man, he fucking ran some dude over but then, yesterday, yeah, but dude. Yeah, he, but then he runs a guy over, like, two quarters later. It doesn't make any sense. It just, I don't think Lenny's the problem. I don't think Lenny's the problem. And, and I didn't uh, say he's Chris, a problem. But yeah, Chris we can't, we broke can't criticize a, uh, Byron. We can't criticize Byron when sometimes the players just don't make the play. Like, that fourth down conversion probably is right. a fourth down conversion if we throw a red flag. It might not even be a fourth down if you throw a red flag when K. Dotton. You got him. The third down. down should have been a first down. Is what he you're wasn't saying. even touching the ground. They called right. him down. But my point is that maybe you know it, it, it's it's not saying Byron's you know free of criticism obviously because I totally agree. There's some shit where you're like what the fuck are we doing right now? Yeah. This shouldn't be mm -hmm. this difficult. But other times you're like why the fuck are we dropping balls? Why are we not making you know some plays are not being made and maybe well, there's a little bit of just disconnect. There's no chemistry right now. It feels like on this team. Not to steal Plessis Thunder, but we were talking about it before we started the show, and 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 I've heard the cre creativity criticism come up a ton, but that's just. I mean, Arians' offense wasn't creative either. How many, you know, how many times we hear, oh, well, there needs to be motion, needs to be this, needs to be that. They're still scoring points. They're still putting up numbers. And back to what I was about to point out, Chris uh, Molly said Brady's finger and shoulder are injured. That I'm sure that was a factor. You're never going to hear from that guy, bro. He could have been in severe pain yesterday, and he'll never make that excuse. And we won't ever know. We just won't. And so maybe some of that, you know, is a factor here. But I, you know, the same guys who were saying, you know, giving BA all the credit and and giving the credit to Brady or taking the way taking the credit away from BA and saying Brady was the OC, isn't that not the same situation right now with Byron? Is is Brady not the OC now? I'm sure he's given options and in, uh, in plays. He's not audibleing out of things. It's just we're not firing, firing on all cylinders. We're not playing with a full deck right now as well. And I think that has a lot to do with it. Continuity's not there. And guys are playing banged up, man. How fucking what – a, what a soldier Mike Evans is, dude. Most guys would have tapped out, you know, in that first quarter. I think that's when he, when he got hurt. He's just a monster, dude. I wish we had more, more guys like him. And I, I guess Godwin's similar. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, you know, just looking at breaking it down offensively, there's new pieces, no, no doubt about it. Obviously, you're you're working with a new group, but 
you still know the personnel that is there. You still have Mike, you still have Chris, you still have guys that have been in that offense, Leonard Fournette, obviously Tom Brady for the last two seasons, now going on his third season in this offense. My thing is when you, when you look at it, yes, they passed more on first down yesterday. Yes. That's a bonus. That's great. That's what they should be doing. Um, you're using the pass to set up the run game. So there were some good things there as they, they started off the game with the pass, but you had a protection breakdown, get a key, let his guy get in too quickly. And that caused, you know, incomplete pass. So yes, it's a combination of execution, but also it's a combination of play call too. Like play call makes the execution easier to a sense if you do it in the right fashion and how you call that play with a play concept or design or however you want to do it. You're making it easier on the execution if you start it with a good high percentage pass. And you can use the passing game as a run game, run game to set up your passing game, et cetera. It all works together. So my thing is like finding ways to make things easier on these guys because you have new people in there and understanding that you're not the offense that you were the last couple of years. Like you have to find ways to be different and find ways to attack defenses in different ways um so that's that's my biggest thing like yet by the way yet i mean we weren't the offense that won the super bowl five games in the season right that we won the super no bowl. It's, it's, we, it's we're and then we're a mess on defense too i mean it took us time to really gel yeah. and get together and this is a completely different group of guys there is no jpp there is no sue ba is not on the sidelines you know we're missing some P ryan jensen's out we're missing some dogs out there you know show the x-ray bro we're only got a couple like one or two dogs in there right now we need to have 53 of them so um, some of that too though like i think some that what's happening possibly is that byron's not yet understanding the limitations of gadecki and maybe, maybe he is though maybe he is maybe that's but, why he's call, calling it so close to the vest yeah, gadecki was getting not, murdered out there again yesterday but yesterday for the first time all season we saw shot plays we saw a little yep. bit more of what seemed it felt like ba's offense from the last two years a lot more than it has all season yesterday it's, they were running the ball, or they were throwing the ball on, on first down, like you said, Plus, They were taking shots. They, they were calling mm -hmm. shot plays. Whether they worked or not, it didn't matter. They were still calling those plays. But it still felt like, at times, Gadecki would kind of fuck up the play. I mean, he, he, he hasn't played lights out yet this season. He's had, he's had good t uh, moments. He's had bad moments. But it seems that when he has a bad moment, it derails a lot of shit, too. But, I mean... Again, I still think it's like they're just not connected yet on offense, and that and, and we've kind of been able to bail ourselves out with our defense for the first two weeks of the season, where they were they seemed pretty lights out. They were pretty lights out in the second half against the Packers too. But I think yesterday they just I don't I don't know how to take Devin White's comments, man. Like <laughs> I don't want to hear a player tell me that they kind of got bored, but it's also very honest. So I do want to hear that too because you're like I mean, just a human. That's a human response to to a question, mm -hmm. but. Like they've got to stay. I think I mean, they he spoke the truth. That's what happened. He spoke the fucking truth. But they, but they, but they need to understand yeah. that. Like they need to st they need to play at a certain level the entire game until this team gets caught up on the other side of the ball. That's not what, only that. That's not only that, Samer. That's his fucking job, bro. That's Devin White. That's who Devin White is. We we all you know use the Ray Lewis comparison, but he needs to be that guy when we're, when we're up twenty one, because you know he needs to be the guy out there firing everybody up. And doing his, you know, and doing his best to to be the leader on that defense, and we are missing leadership, and he's supposed to be that guy. Um, and I get, you know, he's played well at times this season. It's not really a criticism on his play necessarily, um, but he runs his mouth, and he needs to step the fuck up. It's his defense now. But that whole defense, though, the whole defense, they played lights out for fourth quarters the first two games of the season. It mm -hmm. wasn't even a question. They were fucking stepping on throats. They were absolutely just killing people. And then the last two weeks, it feels like they're not consistently there. Even against the Packers, they only played two really good quarters, if you think about it. And so this week, they're going up against a lesser opponent, you know, in everyone's eyes for the most part. But you still, like, they need to take the the approach that Warren Sapp and, 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 and Derek Brooks used to have, where it's like, we have to play our absolute best the entire game until this offense figures it the fuck out. And if they do that yesterday, if they stop the run, which I'm now completely like, I am fucking worried at this point. It's no longer a fluke. We're five games into this shit. Why can't we stop the run plus? What the fuck is going, is it different schematically? Or are we not 
like run fits? Is it is it not having the guys next to Vita Veda for Vita to actually making it? Like, what's happening? You actually look or, at the tape. Or are we play, playing playing some teams that run the ball really fucking well? They were. Well, on, I, mean, I don't even know who the running six, back was yesterday. I have no idea who that guy was. None. Six sixty yards were from Mariota. So mm -hmm. I mean, you look at it from that aspect. Um, you know, a lot of that was just miscontainment, or they were doing, you know, um, option plays where they had the dive and he was running you know, pass, you know, given point or, you know, JTS was keying on Mariota and then the running back was going by him because uh, he handed it off. So there's a lot of different things. Uh, linebackers, maybe not getting to their spots. Uh, Devin White, um, you know, guys, certain guys not um, holding up containment on the outsides or really they're just doing a good job of scheme, like design, play design. And Atlanta has a really good uh, not very complex scheme, but it's a scheme where they do a lot of motion and they get guys outside. They run um, a lot of different, a lot of different variations. So it's tough to defend at times and they've run the ball well all season long. So they're one of the top rushing teams in the league because of the threat at quarterback. I mean, when you have a threat at quarterback, it makes it tougher to defend. Um, I'm not too worried about the, the run defense. Again, you're up 21, nothing. And the Falcons decided to continue to play their game plan, which is running the football because they don't have a passing attack. So yeah, they got yards on us when we were playing back into, you know, pass defense and took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the, yeah, I, I don't came... think this game was on. I said, I tweeted out yesterday. I don't think this game or the, or the, the, the fall was really on the defense. It was that, th I that three and out period. Though. Yeah, no, it was that three and out period um, where we had three, three and outs in a row yeah. that, that really just, kind of stunted your, you know, all your the off, momentum we have in there right your offense has to help out your defense and vice yeah. versa like it's complimentary football and that's something that bucks have to get back to defensively what i would like to see and this is why i go back to coaching like keep it simple don't don't make things harder than it needs to be especially on both sides of the ball but defensively let your pass rushers rush the passer like and I know it's a part of this game. I know they have to do their zone blitzes. I know JTS and Shaq Barrett have to drop into coverage and do all those things. But JTS was winning consistently yesterday. Let him win and let him rush. Like I don't know. I don't know. Plus, we saw what what Vita Vea could do at safety in the package <laughs> game. We saw that. I, I you know I, right. And again, I, it's it's <laughs> mixing it in at the right time. Like it, it's it's sprinkling those things and not using right. it as a consistent foundation. And like, you have to understand, and this goes back to coaching instincts. And some of this, I think we lack at times it's understanding who's winning and given point in time and who's winning their matchups the most and continue to attack that weakness on the other team. And that's something that I get so frustrated with because you go back to the Packers game. I was like sale concepts working pretty much every time. And basically that's a, fly route with a guy going to the sideline on an out route or vice versa post route, whatever you want to call it. It's a combination route. Pretty much. It was working every time against green Bay. So why not do that? Why not continue to attack that weakness? Like they can't stop it, make them adjust. And we didn't do that. And that's something that irritates me because same thing with the Falcons. Like they couldn't stop your pass to the running back, continue to do that. Like, yeah. You were running flood routes. You had Lenny Fournette going the other way. He was wide open pretty much all the time. Rashad White, same thing. Like continue Samer. to attack that. Samer, before before you go, hold on. I, I need I need to say because he donated before we started the show. Lance Wimberly, appreciate the the twenty dollars super chat. He said, and back to what Plus was saying, we were kind of playing pass defense. You know, trying to hold that twenty one point lead. And we have five corners on the field, which obviously hurt our run defense that, quite that's, a bit. That, that's what I was going to say is it yeah. feels like this year we're playing a lot of that really exotic, you know, three safety look. We've got corners all over the field, DBs all over the field in there. And and I, I like that Todd has that ability to do that. But I also feel like it takes away from our ability to stop the run at times. No offense to these guys. You know, Whitehead was kind of a linebacker. So when he was on the field, it, it didn't feel like he had, you know, additional DBs in the, in run support. It felt like he was a linebacker and we could kind of have that a little bit with Keanu Neal, but something that I like, I don't know, man, it just feels like their effort in terms of trying to stop the run is not there. We saw it during the game, Stank and I constantly where they like make the tackle, but then they stop as if the whistle has been blown and it hadn't been blown. And so, and I know we're kind of like nitpicking. We fucking won the game and this sounds absolutely horrible, but <laughs> 
there's still these like moments where you're like, what the fuck are we doing right now? And how much, how, like when we lost Carlton Davis, then we lost SMB and we were down to whoever the fuck is uh, McCollum was in there at one point, but like mm-hmm. we Delaney, still didn't McCollum. Yeah. We really didn't feel that. Like they weren't going to pass. They the didn't attack out. them. They didn't attack no, McCollum exactly. or Delaney. No. So, right. so, so, we're, so going Don't back to quarterback, the, going back to the run defense where I'm concerned is that, in a game, which I'm glad that the Falcons did what they did on that last drive where they scored because they milked the clock for us like dipshits. But yeah, you knew they weren't going to pass the ball. They have no ability to pass the ball. You know they're going to run, and they still ran it on us. Like, we know what they're going to do in that moment, and we still did not stop it. That's Yeah, but concerned. when you're playing nickel or dime or you have that, that personnel out there. But you shouldn't have there, to. It's... You shouldn't have to. That's my point. Like, why? Why are, this team is not going to Because they the didn't want to give up the big play. They, they're not they, going they were, to. They were they're okay. They were okay with the Falcons running fucking a 12-yard, seven-minute drive and, and giving and up the points. Yeah, well, they. I mean, obviously, you don't want them to score. Maybe hold them to three, but we gave up the easy touchdown with a, with an obvious hold. By the way, uh, on that run play, I yeah. think it was on the second touchdown. But that's gonna happen. But they shouldn't have had. They shouldn't have been able to run for eight straight plays without ever once coming to a fourth down. I mean, like, it's obvious. We, we've all said it. JPP, great run there. stopper. Sue, great one run stopper. Whitehead, phenomenal run stopper. We got three guys that are, that aren't on this defense anymore who are really good at stopping the run who aren't there anymore. They're just not. So, even, yeah, even, we're suffering from JP, that shit. Even when JPP didn't actually make the tackle, what I liked about JPP was he knew set the to edge. at least set the edge. Yeah. Hold that and make sure he did not allow anyone to get around that his, yeah. his contain. And what I see a lot with, with JTS, I love him when he's rushing the passer, but at times on the run, he just runs up the field. He's like this, like C ball, get ball, whatever they call that. That's so what he's he a does little a bit light in the ass, bro. He's not. He's not built like JPP. He's I, not great against the run. But beside that, though, there's still like there's still uh, what is that called? Uh, uh, you you have to uh, discipline. That's what it is, discipline. Mm-hmm. And he just it's one of those things. C ball, go get ball, as opposed to just doing my job and holding that edge and holding that contain, which I'm supposed to do, which JPP was so good at. Even if he didn't make the tackle, he still did his job. And yeah, but we're comparing we're comparing a guy who's a first year starter That's to a, a guy who has multiple Pro Bowls. Had he not lost his fucking hand, you know, he he could have p- potentially put like a Hall of Fame career together, bro. That, he was that I'm, good. I'm agreeing with that. What I'm saying is, I think part of what's happening with JTS is like growth and having to take his lumps is what's hurting the run defense. I'm making I'm trying to figure out and understand why it's happening, yeah. obviously, because yeah. in a few weeks we face the fucking Ravens, who can run with like anybody they fucking give the ball to. And also this guy who happens, matchup for us. who happens really to be like probably the MVP who's putting everything on his back, betting on himself and Lamar mm-hmm. Jackson. Maybe he's in pewter next year. Who knows? But yeah, for now he's but not. It, it's not. It's not just one guy when it comes to run defense. I mean, it's again, 11 working as one and that goes on both sides of the ball. And like we talk about on offense with a lack of execution, inconsistent ex- execution, I should say. Uh, I mean, Kyle Rudolph drops a pass on your first drive. You have to Mm -hmm. punt because of that. Um, You know, Lenny Fournette can't get a a one yard because he runs, doesn't run the right way. Or Kate on has the first down, but the ref messes it up. Or we forget to challenge, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, it's run defense. Yes. Is it a concern? Sure. But again, this is a passing league and I'm always for, you know, stopping the pass first. That's why I'm saying keep it simple. If they're if they're in an offense where they're gonna run the ball, freaking blitz, man. Just run blitz all day and run blitz all day. Play aggressive on the outside. Make them beat you over the top. If they do, great. If not, you probably get a sack because Mariota can't throw. Same thing with Lamar Jackson. Like, go after these guys. Well, Lamar's a better quarterback. He can throw the ball. But you know, understand who you're going up against. And that's my biggest thing. My biggest takeaway, understand who you're playing, understand who your matchups are. And that's why I say coaching will hold us back because they don't attack the people that they should the right way. But are we really going to sit here and, and, and criticize Todd Bowles? That guy knows how to fucking coach football. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that he knows how to coach. Yes. He knows how to develop these, the talent. Yes. But when it comes down to, calling plays on both sides of the ball and understanding who you're facing there needs to be a better game plan of attacking weaknesses just in my opinion but we don't do it i get i get what you're saying plus to an extent though but again we don't know the play and there's multiple times yesterday devin white screams in misses a sack 
Devin White screams in, misses <laughs> a you know a, a negative play on a run, ends up being a three yard gain or four yard gain. They have multiple chances to take Mariota down in the backfield. He gets around him, and he ends up turning into a first down. Mm-hmm. So some of that is like he if those plays are made, are we sitting here saying the same thing? We're probably not. I mean, I saw more aggressive calls against the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, don't forget the sack the fumble game. that just magically bounced back into fucking Mariota's yeah. arms, bro. That was Vita, some weird shit. Vita Vey was about to right. pick that fucker up and take it for six. It would have been yeah, that was, game, that was right? be a house It was going to be amazing. Sure. It would have been awesome. And, then, and that was key. They missed the field goal. So. But again, but against Dallas, we I felt like we were more aggressive. So I, I, I feel like maybe it's Todd learning his new guys. Maybe it's Todd trying to figure out how he can use his – guys properly and and and, and yeah. get the most out of them and some like listen we love Devin white but i don't think he played a very good game yesterday and i'll be honest as as, as legendary as levante is he's kind of been missing the last couple of games and he's had a couple of chances to make plays and you just don't see it or he looks like he's slow footed on coverage and uh, not to defi- again we're nitpicking we just won the fucking game but it doesn't feel like a win, and I think Brent yeah. said it in the chat earlier. We're used to scoring 31 points. We're used to giving up only right. 23, 24 we're points, and now it doesn't, not we're not team. seeing that. So yeah. we're not feeling the same way, whereas, right. you know, we did get the win, and King Cook also makes another good point. He says, we stopped what, you know, we let them do what they think they wanted to do, and we, we, we made them one-dimensional. We still won the game, and he, yeah, that's true. That's, that's good to an extent, but eventually you're going to face a team that can do both things and you have to take away what you know they're going to do. And that's where I'm a little concerned. Like, can we do that? I want to see that game, that team from the fucking Dallas Cowboys game. That's the defense that we should be. And King, and King cook, you're, you know what? That strategy is the right strategy and it would have paid off had our offense not completely shit the bed three times in a row and just kept on giving them the ball back and giving them the chances. That's why I just, I can't put it on the defense, even though we lost both of our, I'm yeah, not, even we're, we're, not, lost yeah, we're, we're yeah. not putting on the defense. We're just talking about the rush defense, how it may be a problem. There may be Def- something there. Defensively, I'm not really worried because I know, like like Stank said, Coach Bowles, I think, is great as far as making adjustments, understanding what he needs to do. Um, it's more of the other side I'm worried about where they just continue – after the first 15 scripted plays, they just try to continue to run yeah. what – you know, their playbook, and there's not a adjustment in the, in the game where, okay, you have this working. Let's continue to attack it. You don't see that, and it's – that's what's not, frustrating. Not especially- a whole lot is working well. Like, there's – what do we hang our hat on on offense right now? Nothing other than Mike, Ave- Mike Evans doing Mike Evans shit and, and Chris Godwin doing Chris there's- Godwin shit. And we we have ran the ball. I you know criticism criticism is oh, great and everything. I thought we were, we've run the ball ball pretty good this season so far. Not great, but but better than I've in, you know and that I've seen in past seasons. There's yeah. certain runs that work every time, and that's what I'm talking about. Like when we run the ball out of shotgun and we have the two guys pulling to the left, that play works 99 percent of the time. So it's stuff like that where you see one play work. Hey, let's try it again. You know, do stuff that works later in the game. That's something that I see as far as a, f- a film analyst, like get frustrated with because you have certain formations and packages that work consistently. Co'Keefe has a lead blocker. Every time he lead blocks, usually a positive play. Let him do his job. So it's have him lead short block yardage, on bro. Fourth yeah. and one, please. Can right. we not line up in the in the I formation? Or, you know, run some old school pro set and and run behind that guy and short yardage. And we that's... every time we're in third and one, bro. It's like, oh god, here we go again. And it seemed like we're always in fucking third and one. By the way, Pelagian Computer specifically for you. He gave you money, bro. He threw. He just tucked a big fat twenty right in your right in your panties, dude. He said, "Plus, it's me." Are we seeing <laughs> something completely different in route concepts? On a few occasions, it seems like the spacing was absolutely horrible. I'll hang up and listen in his best British voice. <laughs> no, the route concepts, I think, are – they're okay. They're different. There's some more unique. I mean, the one that Chris Godwin had for 20 yards, that was a nice little play where it's just an in and an out uh, where he did a good job of executing and and making that play. Um, yeah, the, the route concepts have been better. They've run some more variations of mesh and, like, some different types of – uh, sales and like all those different kind of things that they've been doing more. My biggest thing, like I was getting to, don't make it harder than it needs to be. And when you see certain plays work, Byron needs to understand. Let's go back to that. Maybe do it in the same formation, or you know, mix the personnel, but run it again. And 
You maybe, know, that's maybe, all. I, that's maybe, all I want to see. Make it simple. Maybe it's one of those things where Byron's overthinking it himself and trying to not seem predictable by calling the same thing again after the defense has seen it possibly to where instead of actually just calling it the fuck again because it's going to work, which the Packers and the Rams, like these other, the, the Niners will run a play over and over and over again until you stop it. Even though you've seen it, they're just gambling that they're going to do it better than you, which, I mean, if you know your guys can do something, fucking let them do it and, and, and like bet on them. And sure, maybe one day, one time it will blow up, but I totally get that point. But I think maybe it's Byron just kind of still feeling himself through this because, again, we're like, we're criticizing him, but also he's kind of new with this. It's not like he's been doing it like B.A. has been doing it or a guy like Sean Payton or even yeah, a guy yeah, like Not just that. There's so many fucking new pieces on this offense, too. New is. tight end. We have, to, we have to do this again. Like, how many new pieces are there? You know, and yeah, he's probably only using a, a, a small percentage of the playbook right now. He's just now getting Scotty back into, you know, the doing what Scotty does well, right? Mm-hmm. Which is stretch the fucking field. Take shots with that guy. He's the best guy on the team for it right now. I don't care if you fucking hate him or not. And, it, you know, eventually Brady and Scotty are going to hit. Connect. Yeah, you'll connect once. But I, yeah. I, I want to talk a little positive shit, though. But now, now that Tom's Kate missed Otten, Rashad White. Kate Otten, dude. I mean, if this guy can, like, it looks like Tom likes him. It looks like Tom trusts him. Tom expects him to be somewhere. He's been there every single time, it seems like. And if they can kind of get that relationship rolled in, and now we have somebody that we can lean on for Tom, because Tom misses Gronk not only from a play calling standpoint in terms of like calling certain certain likes for him, it's more or less he's been kind of a safety valve. If something breaks down, he knows Gronk's going to be here and Gronk's going to see the same thing, and I can just throw it to him, whether it's one yard, two yards, or 25 yards. So I think having K do what he's doing, and again, like you said, Rashad White, dude, mm-hmm. I, listen, no offense to Lenny. But Rashad White hits the hole like he is fucking starving for yardage. And when he hits that shit, it's just different. It's a, it's totally more, it's just more dynamic. I think we need to see a little bit more of him. But we mm-hmm. saw yesterday, that shit was awesome. Like, he, it felt like the offense was on fire when they put him in for that one or two series. And we were just, like, I thought maybe Lenny was going to get benched after that fourth down. But it didn't happen, which is good. He he made good plays on the field, down the, uh, the stretch. But go ahead and talk about what we see from Rashad and obviously from Cade. Yeah, Cade and Cade played very well. And again, like you said, being that that safety blanket underneath for for Tom, I think is huge. But utilizing him, isolating him uh, across the middle of the field, you're going to see more of that. And and Cade, I think, is probably going to be tight end one going forward with Cam Brate mixed in behind him. Uh, and I think that's the way it should be. Uh, so yeah, him getting more comfortable, understanding the offense, him as a blocker is already light years from what we've had in the past outside of Gronk, obviously, but having him and then Coquife as blockers really helps the offense. Cade's going to continue to get better. And I like him, you know, just continue to be utilized underneath. And then same thing with Rashad, Rashad's visions and his ability to catch the football out of the backfield pass protection is already coming along very nicely. Had a key block on Mike Evans, 40 yard pass play uh, on the, on the blick, uh, blitz pickup if i could talk uh so that was good blick up. yeah blick up um rashad yeah he's coming along smoothly man he understands everything he's got to do and i think byron's going to continue to utilize them even more you'll probably see like a 50 50 going forward with him and lenny um so yeah and when rashad runs it again no hesitation and i think that's something that lenny is struggling with he's kind of hesitating at the line a little too much i don't know if it's that it's the hammy that's bothering him, but got to be one cut and go, um, especially when, you know, you have certain things on the offense line, Luke get struggling. He's getting beat at times, but there's holes to be had. Like there's holes to be there. You got to hit and go like, there's I, no... listen, I get it. I'm yeah. a big man. I'm a big man, bro. But when I, when I got the ball in my hand, I'm trying to be, you know, Barry Sanders out there. <laughs> it doesn't ever work ever. And so I get that he wants to be that guy. You know, he's just not that in the NFL. But that being said, <laughs> Lenny makes some great fucking plays out there. Yeah, he and did. he is a, he is a good outlet for Brady, you know, when the play breaks down. He's a good pass catcher. He does a lot right. He's a good blocker. Um, and it's a good thing that we have two guys out there that I think are, are both playing well right now in yeah. Rashad and Lenny. Yeah, the capable. Thing, too, the other thing I was going to say is, I don't know if he doesn't trust Gadecki because when we ran behind Gadecki, it seemed to be positive. It's and the Lenny, pass blocking. Yeah, 
Yeah. The pass blocking, I get that part. But then when we go try to run up the middle or to the right, it feels like Lenny hesitates or he doesn't see the hole or he turns his back for whatever fucking reason and tries to push the defender using his back. It, those are the moments where I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, Lenny? And he then he turns around and makes a fucking play that you need him to make. So it's like, again, love, hate. But um, Listen, and in, in Gadecki's fucking, you know, the dude is face. Too. He's a rookie. He's faced some two... You know, two weeks in a row, some pretty fucking good D tackles, man. Yeah. The whole season, uh, that, dude. The whole season, yeah. he's faced a fucking gauntlet of defense yeah, he has. players. He has. I mean, and he'll grow from that. He'll grow from that for sure. I, listen, I trust Jason Light, dude. The guy's got to be good. If Jason drafted him, he's got to be good. He doesn't really mess with those, with guys like, with guys like that. We're not we're not questioning that pick at all. It's just one of those things where it seems to be that there's there's just factors that are kind of working against the Bucks' offense right now. And it's yeah. just learning and getting over that hump and, you know, that game kind of felt like uh, I don't I, it, I don't know it, it did feel like a win but we won the game obviously but um, I didn't even realize it until we, I started reading the chat here I guess Chris Godwin didn't play in the second half of the game yesterday well he had one target in the second half did he play or did they no he was pretty in? much out he didn't come back in so that final drive for the Bucks to close it out and he had one catch for three yards in that final drive. You can tell he's banged up, man. I mean, and outside of the fucking fact he's coming back from a you know knee surgery faster than anybody, but maybe Adrian Peterson, you can tell, man. He's fighting through that shit. That's what he does, man. Yeah, they they, they threw a couple of passes where like we we all gasped and held our breath when he was getting tackled. It seems like he always takes brutal hits. Yeah, but but like <laughs> every that time play, he gets that play, oh, yeah. they, that quick little shot they give to him where he has to like weave his way through the the blockers and whatnot. I love like that play. Screen. Yeah, I love that play with Godwin. And Chris always makes a play. But there's also times when you catch that ball and someone's diving right at you. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Could we just not call this until we know? Yeah, because that doing that is not for right? it's not for the faint of heart. No. That 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 takes that's a grown man catch right there. You know, you're going to yeah. get hit. You know, you're about to get blasted. Linebackers are coming downhill at you. You got safeties coming downhill at you. You got corners coming downhill at you. You better be ready to fucking get yeah. throttled. And he does quite often. Yeah, well, I mean, that that play on the first touchdown drive, that was the first uh, was first touchdown by Fournette. Uh, they had Chris Godwin on that screenplay, but they did a great job of running it where they faked the run to the right. Everyone shifted to the right. Lenny did the same thing. It made it look like a run, but it was a pass back to the left, and Godwin had Mike Evans blocking out in front of him and got to the one-yard line. So it, it's like stuff like that, making it simple, but executing it right where you can catch the defense off guard. And that's something that you got to do more of. You got to make it more simple for these guys to execute at a higher level. That's what I'm getting at as far as the offense. Like, and again, the process was better yesterday because they did pass the ball on first down more. When you pass the ball on first down, you set yourself up for second and four, third and three. How many did we have of those yesterday? We had a lot. A lot. So you create opportunities to execute at a higher level because you're second and five, third and five, you're not facing third and long distances where it makes it tough. And that's what happened in the second half when those three, three and outs in a row, you had third and eights, you had third and sixteens. Like you're not going to convert those. It's just not, not happen. especially yeah. when you, we've, we've kind of got the walking wounded out there. I mean, Cali Bucks says it gauge Godwin, not healthy. Mike Evans was playing hurt yesterday. Tom Brady playing hurt yesterday. Braids out. You know, we're we're we are relying on a lot of guys that are, you know, either new or on the, you know, the second half of the roster out there, and we're despite that, you know, we were able to score some points yesterday. I understand that, but at the same time, if you're out there, you're good enough to play. Yeah, and like I don't these guys, think Mike was hurt. He took that shot, but he was running ball, just fine in the third quarter after that. The ball hit him in the nuts. That's pretty much what happened. Um, oh, okay, you don't think his nuts weren't throbbing the whole game? <laughs> Prob I mean, if probably. If you're in a huddle but... with Tom Brady, I feel like anyone's nuts would be throbbing. <laughs> I want to re re rewind a little bit. Z Good underscore point. Legacy gave us a ten dollars super chat. Thank you very much. It says the energy was there with Gronk. It's never a dull moment with him. Samer, start a Bucks fans F A for the Bucks. Call Gronk. P S Bowels needs to challenge some ref calls. Make an effort for your guys. All mm -hmm. right, so. Um, not sure what Bucks fans FA is for that, but Gronk's not coming back. No offense. I no. just, I don't see it happening. The guy's fucking actually retired. The shit he's doing, he's not going to come play football off the couch. Not happening. No. But Bowles needs to challenge some ref calls. I will say this. I, I was thinking this last night. 
Have we thrown a red challenge flag yet this season? Todd Bowles as head coach. Yes. When we did on the on the Mike touchdown, should have been a touchdown. Oh, okay. That he threw that flag. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I I find it a little odd. Maybe because he thought it was such it you know fourth and short, no big deal, no need to wait. The, the fuck was flag. that not a touchdown? Yeah. <laughs> <Should've> <laughs> been a touchdown. How, how is that not a touchdown? How the fuck was it a touchdown, dude? Yeah. What the fuck? I What's mean, crazy just... is the same play as a touchdown in, in a four o'clock game later on that day. Right. It made no sense. I have no idea what the fuck yeah. that was. But in the stadium, they were showing the replay every angle over and over. Like it was uh, no doubt in anybody's fucking mind. Like he, uh, he didn't even need to go to the booth. He could have looked at the jumbo trying and be like, obviously he fucking scored there. Then he went That's to the crazy. jumbo. He went to the booth and came back. I was like, what the fuck. They are stupid. Okay, can I say that? You Those re that ref squad, is, they're just complete idiots. Yeah, they make yeah. A lot of and shit. the elephant in the room, terrible fucking call on, on the roughing the passer. I didn't think the the Vita one really deserved a flag either, by the way. And then obviously Scotty just got, you know, it would look like the fucking the Viking Saints game, you know, just gets completely blasted by the corner. The ref is right there, and they don't throw the flag. It was that bad was, all over that, the place. That was the Ram Saints, but yeah, let's I'm sorry, talk whatever. about that play. So that that I'm fucking thinking. roughing the passer against Tom, not a roughing oh, the man. passer, but you know what? That was a, a fucking makeup call. That was a clear ass makeup call because the very previous play, like Stank said, it was clearly defensive play, uh, pass interference. And when they showed it on the jumbotron, it was like the whole, the booze that rained down. You're like, I'm thinking, all right, the refs had to have heard that. They're like, oh shit, they probably looked up for like, oh fuck, we kind of fucked that, that was one up. Really didn't bad. We? Yeah. And they're like, hey, I guess let's see if they convert. If they not, they don't convert, we'll call defensive holding. Yeah. Or if they get sacked, we'll call uh, roughing the passer. No big deal, all right? And, th and they break their huddle. But it seemed yeah. like yesterday the refs had they huddled up like seven different times. It was oh, the weirdest it's shit. A mess. It was morons, dude. It was they had no so, idea what they were doing out there. But that yeah. play was a makeup call, and I don't give a fuck if you're a Falcons fan. Fuck off. Yeah, we. it wasn't a fucking... But you know what? You guys got away with pass interference multiple times. Stank pointed out they, they scored on a obvious holding call. They held our guys multiple times throughout the game. Like, fuck you. Yeah, Can so we just what? get rid of old refs calls. altogether? If you're older, if you're over the age of 35, get the fuck out of there. Bro. You don't need to be out there. You can't like, run. You can't like see. Listen, I'm old. I can't do that shit. <laughs> What the fuck? Get those old ass motherfuckers out of there. Yeah, but the head referee on that crew is not that old, dude. He's old. Boger? He's, he's not been that old. He was like 74 he's, years old, dude. No awesome way, dude. Career. Yes, he is. Yes, he's he is. He's got smoother skin bad. than any person. Bro, I remember had. seeing him when he I was, was 13, dude. He was the ref for the, the Lions game on Keller Winslow and the pass interference. Old. Get them the fuck yeah. out of there, man. Yeah. That's why he's Full time old. refs. He's saying old when he's saying old. Everything should be reviewable. Everything. All, uh, all the places. Yeah, his, explanation, be... his explanation. His explanation. Listen, for, have a VR for headset. Why can't why can't why can't the rest wear VR headsets? Right? You know, right after play, they got that shit. They're looking at it, all the angles. Yeah, that was a bad call, dumbass. And they can just roll it back. Let's use technology to our advantage. Should be drones flying all everything. They can catch all the holding in there. They're standing like 15 yards away from the fucking O line. Dude, that would. You know how long games would take? It would take yeah, seven like, seven mm, hours to no, get through one no, game. Wouldn't, no, and no. and. They would. They, they could call holding on every play. You want them they to can. call holding on every Zach play? Zach said he's 67 years old. Okay, <laughs> get, bro, <laughs> get the fuck out of here with that shit. How is he 67 running with Tyreek Hill? Get get him off the fucking field. But hey, listen, oh, they did man. they did call Vita Vea. Vita Vea's belly just happened to stick out too far, and it somehow knocked Mariota's wimp ass down. Which Whoa. absolutely was a fucking sell job. The Falcons player threw him into the quarterback, so it's like. And mm -hmm. even yeah. then, he just kind of like touched him with his belly. I mean, I come on! And then Mark, Mark Murray flop. is fucking dives <laughs> yeah. back like fucking LeBron James yeah. in the goddamn doesn't, finals. Doesn't roll. I don't. And you know what? We we talked about this for the game. I don't like Skinny Vita. I don't like it at all. Is he Skinny Vita though? I think. Ah, uh, yeah. He's me. he looks hungry to me, bro. He looks thin. He looks. <laughs> they need somebody needs to be feeding him. him. Yeah. I hope his mom is watching. You know, maybe his new girl or his wife just not feeding him well Stank, enough, bro. Maybe, I need big, Stank, greasy Stank, Vita, dude. Maybe, maybe on that we, Campbell's soup diet. Maybe we need yeah. to bite the bullet here and just start sending him large pizzas with jars of mayo. With mayonnaise. And just, like, 
the, uh, you know where we know where he lives, so we could just start Uber we Eats. We should start sending Uber Eats orders to his house every night, <laughs> right? Just yeah, eleven thirty at night too. Who's so thirty? Like yep. doorbell rings, he opens the door. Mm -hmm. There's a fucking a box of tacos right yep. there on the fucking. Back. I like it. This is I Vita like Vea, it. right? Think Vita Vea yeah. like. Think like your Vita Vea, big boy. No offense to him, I'm sure he loves food. He looks down like. He's not going to be like, uh, I'm not going to just let these tacos go to waste. I'm not just going to mm -mm. let these burgers nope. go to waste. I'm not just going to let these steaks go to waste. Dude, this is the perfect fucking way to get him back to Big Vita. We just start sending him free food, which he's <laughs> not going to say no to. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, we got Vita fucking stopping the run, taking on 13 defenders at one time or off you know, offensive players. at one. It'd be, uh, dude, we're going to listen. We're going to be hanging out with Vita pretty soon. We, he's he owes us he owes us some balls. We should all show. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it too. I'm gonna show, I'm not coming empty handed. <laughs> Krispy creams, you know. I'm I'm bringing all that shit, dude. That pizza with mayo. That's such a weird combination. Well, he said he ran out of ranch, so they started trying it with mayo at a party one night. And oh he said my it wasn't God. that bad, and it just he likes it. <laughs> but uh, with uh, all due respect, he is getting a lot of double teams, which I think may be playing into the lack of yeah. you know stopping that run a little bit, but. I still think guys. It'd like be Monte nice when we get hits back. Be able to fill that. Nice. So Although Reed, Sin Reed Sinat gaps. got a sack yesterday. Saw that. Sinat's yeah. doing well. Yeah, Vita got a sack. Um, Logan but Hall is play playing better. Ninety-five so. is doing the dance that Vita should be doing. He was like rubbing his belly. You see that shit? And that thing was that huge. Guy's dancing, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like Vita Vea, what the fuck, man? That should be Vita's belly. You're right, Stank. I'm with you. I'm all, I'm all in on fi hashtag feed Vita. That's it. That should be it. There we go. Plus and that can go back. two ways. We need to feed Vita the ball on, on the short yardage, too. <laughs> oh Both goodness. ways. Feed Vita. Please, please, make it simple. Co'Keefe, let him block, and Vita follow. Co'Keefe block. K.O. blocking for Vita on fourth. Oh, my God. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> That's a win. Like, you automatic five yards. Because clearly, we are not doing quarterback sneaks anymore, right? No. Uh, it's just off the ball. It's out of the playbook. They're protecting Tom. So if they're not going to do that, then we just need to get creative. Well, you know I what, like man? It. You know, you know, uh, the most disappointing thing about yesterday is that Vita Vega couldn't pick up that ball while it was on the ground and run because there was nothing I wanted to see more than that man holding a football running forty yards down the field because you knew no one was going to catch him somehow. He was just going to be like, "This guy's a fucking freak! Look at the athletic! How the fuck is he running down the field? Rumbling, bumbling, yeah. stumbling!" And he wouldn't, wouldn't look athletic too. Like they, that I wanted that to happen so badly when that ball was right there, and it was like, "God damn it!" Maybe you're right, Stank. Hungry or Vita probably grabs that ball quicker. He does. Yeah, Mariota doesn't fucking Peter Parker that shit back into his hands, bro. I want to see the close up of that shit. It didn't look right. A spider web. It went against physics and just somehow ended up back in his it hand. It didn't like look glitch. right. It looked like a Madden yep. glitch. It just like whoop yep. back in his hand. Plus, can you have a segment on that on that particular play, please? Break it down. You know, like they do on fucking, you know, like all those stupid cop TV shows where they where they enhance. Can you mm -hmm. enhance that like down real real low? Like look and just and it kind of comes in in 4K when you just zoom in. That's the That's best part. Uh, can you look in on the, on his on his license plate? Uh, it's really you know, the reflection off that puddle, it's, though. It's really, it's really blurry. Is there anything you can do to enhance it? And the guy goes, uh, "Yeah, hold on, let me try something." He pulls out his keyboard and just starts fucking tapping away. <laughs> By the way, I'm in Photoshop every day of my life. This is not possible. All of a sudden, he goes, "Maybe this will work." And he hits enter, and all of a sudden, it like zooms in and yeah. unpixelizes. All the pixels go away, and it's like 8K. And like, oh, look at that. There it is. Oh, also, if you need it, it's in a puddle over here as well, like <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. just in case. Like, dude, that is not possible. Not possible. That's I like that goth, the goth chick from. Um, I hate all that shit. It's so yeah. It's she's like bullshit, she's like one of those hat, those fucking computer people. What the hell is this name of the show? I can't. That's, that's why I like SVU because they rarely go to the technology guy at the desk and ask him to help out. They're right. just like, all right, we're gonna have to do old fashioned detective work here and find Law this and order. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They don't do that weird shit that they do on the CSIs where it's like Abby. Yeah, thank you, thank you, uh, Zach. Or the dude who takes off his fucking glasses and has a catchy phrase <laughs> at the beginning of every show. Looks like cold-blooded murder. He's, he's the best, dude. And then they play that the fucking the song by The Who. Is that The Who sings I that was, song? The Who? The Redeem Team is pretty good. That just came out on Netflix. I was watching that. That's basketball, though. Different right, story. We're, we're talking about CSI, dude. What the fuck I are know. you talking about? Yeah, CSI Miami. That's the one. Yeah, that dude. That fucking really pale dude with the orange hair. That has some like catchy ass shit to say every time he shows up to a crime scene. He inspects some shit. He stands up. He stands up with his back towards the rest of the group for some reason and looks. He over drops those Greg Allman bars, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. 
He had, he looks over his shoulder while <laughs> while facing the opposite direction. He goes like this. Going, Everyone's man. over there, and he's just standing over here. He goes, and like the guy died from like a fucking ice pick or some shit. And he goes, cold blooded murder. And then they fucking play that song. It goes Wah! no, it'd be like no. It was more like he picked the wrong day. No, I, I saw an episode where he said, shit like he said cold blooded murder. No, he'd have all those I stupid puns, it, bro. He was a pun master. That's it why you know you know Greg loved that retarded. guy. Retarded. I could not stand that shit. <laughs> and I don't know who sings that song. That that it's a really good song for that. It's, uh, it's one of those. It's one of those. It's who, who I whatever. think it is, right? Zach, who? please, can you? Yeah, Horace, listen. <laughs> Zach, Zach is our our little goth dude on the computer right now. Everything where all the questions we're asking, he's googling it. Yeah, and then Horatio. It yeah. Also, Horatio. dumb fucking name for a detective. Get the fuck out of here. Oh man. All yeah, right, there's never been on. a ginger named Horatio before. I promise right, you. That. Add has hit the show. Yeah, Smitty. Smitty <laughs> yeah. I think Smitty's calling in. Let's go to the penthouse hotline. Let's Bring go to positives. Smitty. You're on the penthouse hotline with the loose cannons. What's up, man? What's going on, fellas? Up What's in Atlanta, up, man. I don't heard. If, I don't heard everything. Atlanta's pissed off. They can't mm-hmm. wait to meet us again. Yep. All they can, all they can say is, "God damn it, Tom Brady and that privileged ass shit he be doing." <laughs> they about start yelling, "Spygate, Spygate, Spygate!" And old lady said, "That's why his old lady left him." I said, "What the hell are you talking about?" <laughs> That's why she left him because because they've been cheating and shit. And she, the DJ ain't putting up with that shit. Anyway, man, we don't have the we we don't have the same thing we have had in twenty twenty. We don't have the Bronx. We don't have the ABs. I didn't mean to say that like that with AB, but he did his thing. You know, in the he Super Bowl, thing. who were the main, who were the main characters in the Super Bowl scored? It was it was Bronx, Gronk and AB, AB, and and, and Lenny uh, um, Ballroom with the Ballroom Lenny, a uh, Super Bowl Lenny. Mm-hmm. Those were the main ones. Like that's the only ones he really trusts. Now, Mike Ball, did his thing. He got some yards. Chris Ball. did his thing. Fuck his ballroom landing. Uh, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I like Super Bowl like landing. My, <laughs> I, I watched <laughs> Lawrence work earlier. I thought, uh, one, then a two, and then three. Do you remember? Never mind. You don't remember that far back. Anyway, man. Uh, no, I do. Fans up here. Hey, uh, man. Smitty, are the tears flowing through the streets of Atlanta right now? Uh, can you go out there and it looks yeah, like yeah. like a dam just broke? Yeah, 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 it is, man. There's a lot of hate. They can't wait till you guys come up to, to Atlanta. They, they ready for they ready for get back, man. They said that was some bullshit. I said, man, did y'all see? I said, that wasn't the only bad call. It was called mm-hmm. all over the field. I believe the referees were betting on our game. It was a point spread. We can't let it go over this much. Man, think about it, man. It was calls on both sides. And that last one, that was a bullshit call. Yeah, but don't blame right. Tom. One dude argued me down. Tom Brady, he, he did the same thing in the Super Bowl. Cuff and roll. Cuff and roll. What are you talking about, cuff and roll? I know what I'm talking about. I played football in the Negro League. I said, I never heard of the Negro League. I don't know what that is. Anyway, <laughs> man, it was it was a sad day. I, I feel it felt it feel like we lost, man, for some reason. I don't it know did. why. But we won. It's like everybody everybody said in Atlanta said, What happened to Julio? What happened to Julio? Why he he should have been up for this game. He's hurt again? I said, I don't know. He must be hurt. He's not playing, but he's hurt. The uh, other guy he hurt what is wrong with his knee or something, man? It's Who a knee. Man. He'll he'll be fine. The rest of them. It'd for, be fine. Yeah, yeah they bring them. They bring them along slowly, man. Yeah, don't really. Need oh, them okay, right now. okay. Anything we get from that but, guy uh, is a bonus, honestly. I'd rather get it later on hey, in the man. year than playoffs too. I hear that, man. But other than that, man, I'm glad we got the W, and we hopefully we get better as we go. Maybe by the ninth game, we'll see how we do in the ninth game. Maybe by the jail, we get some of these players back because Tom looking like. I don't know, man. It's just something weird going on with that. You can tell like he's hurting, or I know a lot of things going with him and Gigi, but I don't know, man. And I guess I can't blame everything on the coaches. You know, they got to make the plays, man. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, anyway, man, uh, I'm still a Buck fan. Hopefully, we'll straighten it up. We got Pittsburgh next on to this game. We and will be nothing there. Easy. Oh, that's why y'all are going, yeah. man. The cannons are traveling up to the cold Pittsburgh. I think it's going to be in like the. 50s or something? I can't wait, bro. It's going to be great, man. It's going to be great. I've had so much titty sweat leather. over the last month, man. I can't wait to have some dry. Yeah, I said it. I said it. I get boob sweat. I hit wow. you a lot yesterday. So does half the game. people in the chat right now. I hit you a lot during that game yesterday, I realized, by the way. <laughs> bro, you smacked me in my leg, and this shit stayed red for at least two quarters. <laughs> That's what happens, man. That's it was a hot happens. one yesterday. Yeah. I got sunburned from it. 
Well, I didn't. Um, we didn't see actually any sun, honestly, at our section. We were in the shade. Yeah, we, we got so, lucky as fuck. We were yeah. shaded up most but of the game. But 4 o'clock games, we would have died. Uh, we've died. At, we did that. The, we did the in the Packers game. game. Yeah. 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 Um, I think this is Tom in Michigan. I'm not sure. But we'll go to A63. You're on with the Loose Cannons. You're on the Pet House Hotline. What's up? What's up, man? What's up, man? Why are you so sad, I'm man? It's, it's a victory Monday. Yeah, you sound man, you sound. Me. Super trust me, sad. Trust me, I ain't sad. I, I just got done watching ESPN, and like you know, I it's, it, I'm hurt. I'm hurt because it's like it's a narrative that's just trying to get spun. Like they trying to spin a narrative like our offense win like kicking ass for like three quarters. They they trying to spin a narrative like our defense ain't been smashed and stuff for like three weeks, excluding the uh, Kansas City debacle. That's whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like all they do every week is like focus on one thing, like that was the deciding factor. Let's say they did they didn't call the rest of the passengers. There's no way you know what I'm saying? There's no way um Mario was gonna drive that ball eighty, eighty five yards to score a touchdown. I just don't believe that was gonna happen. Nobody wanna mention that. You know, let's let's and it's like the Bucks fans too that's really irking me too. It's like <laughs> Let it go. We want the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let it, let it go. We want yeah. the game. Listen, Listen man, we become we, we become spoiled though. We are we are yeah. what the Patriots fans used to be, and and sometimes that shit, idiot. yeah, that shit is, is it's hard to, it's hard to watch, right? And I'm I, I'm no better, bro. Like we we have expectations now. That's the problem. We all expect better. We all feel like we can win another Super Bowl, but we just haven't proved it on the field yet. But it's not wrong. So with having, holding, it's not wrong with holding high standards for our right. team, and I, we should let have that. It doesn't feel. It feels a lot better than thinking, "Oh man, can't wait for that fucking draft day." Can't wait for April. <laughs> That's what we're used okay. to, though. Yeah. Yeah. We Go don't ahead. know how to act right now. Yeah, it's just process for me. Let, 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 so. That's true. But did we win or not? We won. Yeah. No, yeah, the, we won okay. first. Our three and two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me say one more thing. When the Patriots was on their little dynasty run. I, I, I'm a I'm a diehard Bucks fan, so I'm, I'm not too familiar of the regular season. I just know they they want the big game. But I'm pretty sure with Bill Belichick as they coach, they defensive minded. They wasn't just blowing out opponents every right. week. They was being grinded out victories, just like we've been doing every week. I think we adopted the Patriots um, mo in a sense. I think our fans, us in general, we just need to cool down, especially, especially this last game. It's like we got Bucks fans just complaining about this penalty, like. How y'all complaining? How we are we complaining about a penalty that helped us? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, let's we got no, to just pump the brakes. We're we're a top five team in the league. No hands about it. No question about it. We're a top no, five team in the league. And I'm pumping in about us going to Super Bowl. And I got one more take. The last guy who was just on here, he was speaking about the last year Super Bowl, right? And he was talking about how we missing Gronk and AB and how those were like the main factors in the Super Bowl. And once again, it's like nobody's like recognizing the true core of this team. I think Tom Brady came in this team because of the defense. Like I think Tom Brady's team with James Winston, I'm sorry to say his name was on was on our squad. I think <laughs> Tom Brady's team that James was was the was the like the killer of our team. I think those thirty interceptions come seem like, hey, they got the defense to do it. If I can just chop those thirty interceptions to ten to fifteen interceptions, this is a Super Bowl winning team. And I think everybody's forgetting that. These the defense hasn't changed. All we getting is like younger or we getting more veterans. This is the core of our team. We're so focused on our offense, but the defense is going to take us there just like they did last, just like they did in 2020. Hey, but I love you guys so, man. Loose Cannons, man, I'm a top fan, bro. Loose Cannons, bro, I love you guys, bro. Pick up Great call, man. Uh-huh. Great. Yes, sir. Great fucking call. Awesome call. Uh, hey, he's got a good point, though, man, because if you think about it, there's no way the Falcons were going to throw the ball down the field in that short amount of time and get back in the game and score. Like they were going to run, they they ran like eight minutes off the clock on that one drive. So mm-hmm. say they don't call that penalty, and we end up punting that bitch or not kicking a field. I mean, I don't know if they were out of field goal range, honestly, with that sack. I have no idea, but probably punt it. I mean, yeah, they didn't deserve it anyways. Like you know, we can go back to the butterfly effect. If they call the penalty on on Scotty, we score right there anyways, and they don't even get a chance to have that pass interference penalty. So right. Uh, Looks like we got some spammers in the chat. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right, done with that. Um, got a couple more callers. We'll go to those. Uh, we'll go to uh, 863 again. There's another 863 caller. Look at 863, Cole County coming through. You're on with the loose cannons on the penthouse hotline. What's up? Hello? Yo, the what's loose up? Show? Yes, this sir. This is hey, the loose cannon show. Oh, I like that. Yeah, how y'all doing, man? 
We're doing good. Good. Who's this? And what's your wing preference? This is Jay, man. Tampa, man. I want to tell you, man. Whoa, 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 Jay. Jay, Jay, Jay. Your first time calling? Yeah. Are we? You know, you, we gotta know. What's your wing preference? You like you like them wet? You like them dry rub? And when you oh. dip those wings, when you whip, when you dip those wings, are you dipping them the blue cheese or the devil's anus ranch? Oh, I'm dipping, I'm dipping it in the blue cheese. Okay. A little okay. bit of devil's. Cheese. Oh, you mix them? Yeah. You mix blue cheese and ranch a together? Bit. A little bit, not that much. Just a little bit of the other one, but more blue cheese than the other. Ew. Don't do that again, yeah. man. It tastes good. It tastes good. And I want to tell you, though, I like my ketchup, too. I got to have a lot of ketchup. You dip your wings in ketchup? No, no, no. No, the ketchup is by itself on the side of both of them. <laughs> For what? You drink it? Why is it on the side if no, you're not dipping no, no, it in? No, no, no. No, I like the ketchup. You know, I take my finger, you know what I mean? And that's a separate thing with my finger. <laughs> yeah, hey, you are from Polk County, aren't you? 863? Is this Jeffrey Dahmer? <laughs> Who the fuck is this right now? <laughs> Jay no, Dahmer. Man, no, I'm, I'm over here over Bush, man. Okay. <laughs> oh, you got the 863 area code, though. So I thought you were yeah, I thought you were from Polk County. Of Bush and, down from Bush Gardens, dog. All right. Yeah. Here, yeah. We don't live far from each other. No, all right. All right. All right. I know you called in to talk about Bucks. What's up? <laughs> Yeah, man, I think the game, I know you say it felt like we didn't win. Yeah. It sort of felt like it, but I'm glad we won it. <laughs> and this call, I know what you said about the call, man, but we won it. That guy grabbed us, man, and we won the game. I think he should. I'm so glad that we won the game. I know it don't feel like we won it, but I'm glad we won it because, man, we needed this. You have a celebratory ketchup dip I'm so- with your finger after the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so angry, man. Man, I grabbed my, my, my blue cheese after we we he, he grabbed us. Mm-hmm. And I literally like, man, I wish I could have just threw this right in his face from catching our quarterback. Man, I just dumped all this, just dump it all over his face, the wings and everything. You know what I mean? But I said, no, I, I don't. I said, no, I need the wings. I got to eat. So I need to find something to throw at him. I don't hey, know man. something. Hey, don't knock it until you try it, bro. I'm going to dip no. my fingers in some ketchup. Why wouldn't you suck throw the them. ketchup? Why would you waste blue cheese when you could just throw that fucking vinegary nonsense at him instead? It doesn't even matter where your buck's take is at this point, bro. The whole chat room is going crazy saying you fingering ketchup. <laughs> they don't even yeah. care. Hey, it works, though. For every game, I take my little ketchup and dip it. You know, you know my little dip in this thing. <laughs> and it works. Listen, you got to call in every week now. That's that's the rule, bro. I need to know if okay. your ketchup fingering voodoo is working. Homie's, yeah. homie's eating wings and then putting his fingers in ketchup <laughs> as like a follow-up. What, what's going on right now? Yeah, look, I forgot to do it. I forgot to do it for that Chiefs game and Packers game, and I think that's, that's why, why. We lost yep. it. Oh, you better you yeah. better get your so, fingers all hey, deep in that hunt. I'm doing this. Right, I'm going. doing this. For- I'm doing it for every game, man. What, what, who we got? Hey, here? listen. This weekend, we, listen. We this weekend, we're going to what's called formerly Heinz Field. Do not, yeah, do not Whoa. dip your fingers in ketchup. Oh. Yeah. Stay away from the ketchup this weekend for me, please, Jay Heinz. I'm calling you yeah, Jay Heinz for now. I, I have no idea what your name is at this point. That's right, bro. Oh yeah, yeah because of the Heinz Field. Oh okay, so I yeah. okay, I, I get there. Like, there. I get it's no I coincidence that you called in this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you though about Mike Evans. Uh, when we beat them the first time, who that won that game for us? Was that Mike Evans by one point? I mean, I'm trying to remember. Who, who, Back in like, we beat who the first time? When we beat Pittsburgh the mm, first back time? In, no, back in 2014. Oh, that that was Vincent Jackson huh? who caught that. That was Vincent Jackson who caught yeah. that. Um, well, wasn't it, wasn't it a deflection off of Mike Evans' hand or something? No, no. <laughs> listen, listen. Put the ketchup yeah. down, all right? First of all, great call. <laughs> okay. all right? Great call. I'll tell yeah. you right now, the chat room, it just didn't give a fuck, bro. This <laughs> Deck, Dr. Ketchup Finger. It's like a fucking bad Bond Dr. villain. Ketchup Finger. <laughs> da-da, 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 ketchup Finger in theaters this summer. All right, man, we got a fuck ton of callers now after the ketchup thing. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got off, the, off the rails now. 304 area code. Why with the loose cannons? What's up? 
Hey, fellas, it's Zach. I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that call. <laughs> yeah, just finger, you can't. finger some mustard while you're you talking can't. to us really quick. What, you, what, what are your fingers no, in right now, Zach? Where are your fingers right well, now? Well, my, my fingers are, are, are clean. My toes is all in some, some mustard and mayonnaise mm. that I mixed together. Nah, That's nice normal, speaking. though, right? That's, That's nice speaking my language. Is call? this in preparation for me arriving in, in your home at your home pretty soon? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing a whole foot thing to get ready. So, yeah, for those who don't know, regiment. we're going to we're going to we're going to the fucking museum, bro. We're going to like the fucking Zach Museum. I can't wait. That's awesome. Yeah, so by thirty. Maybe we should change our <clears throat> call in now. It should be what type of wing you like, what you like to dip it in, and what you currently have your fingers in. Where, where are your fingers? Call. What are your fingers in? Where right are your now? fingers at right now? <laughs> well, what's yeah. your fucking bucks I, take, I Zach? Come on, I, have to, yeah. I don't have all night for you, dude. You didn't call in to talk bucks. <laughs> But you don't got all night for me, but we just spent 20 minutes on fingers and ketchup. We had to understand what was going on, all right? That yeah, we had to dig right. deep on that one, bro. We had to negotiate <laughs> through the fucking nonsense of that guy's that call was, to get to the CSI right grits. There. That was my favorite call of the year, honestly. Talking cop shows. I was CSI. Yeah. He's like, I had to have my ketchup on the side. I was like, for what? You know, I just like to put my fingers you could in see, could, Hey, they couldn't see your face because you probably had that stupid no, fucking they could. logo they could, up. They no, could see no you face. can see the look on his, the look on his face is priceless priceless mm. uh i just want to say uh say bucks fans should be complaining about this fucking passing or uh, roughing the passer call man the universe yeah. fucking owes us a few of those calls yeah, right plenty like, of them, yeah. anybody remember bert emmanuel yeah. I mean, come on That's, oh yeah we're, we're owed we're owed several all right so don't, i don't think don't anybody was complaining, complaining. That, i don't think people were complaining they were just pointing it out you know that that honestly i think it was more the frustration with how the game ended you know, and that that obviously being the fucking main theme of it that really got under most people's skin. But I was just, I personally was upset that they were even in the fucking game to begin with at the end of it, bro. I didn't need my blood pressure to go up for no right. fucking reason, bro. M- Mariota doesn't right. deserve to win a football game, bro. That guy's not an NFL quarterback. Right, right. Uh, but I won't, I won't keep you guys. But I just say, uh, short yardage is concerning. Mm-hmm. I feel like we have have really, really regressed and picking up anything one yard uh so that's concerning pittsburgh's going to be run heavy so we, you know we got to have to stay focused and not get bored during the game uh but uh I'll, I'll get off here i'll see you i'll see you bitches on friday uh bucks by 30 hey you, you, make sure you pick us up in that helicopter by the way i'm not Samer, did you send him driving. the list you sent him the list of things that need to be, first of all, in the pickup vehicle and the, what we need when we arrive oh, there. My, my rider? Yeah, I thought yeah. you were going to send him that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm having that. a little bit of trouble, a little bit of trouble procuring two elephants and two camels. Uh, I did get a giraffe and a chimpanzee, but the elephants and well, listen, camels Well, anytime, anytime I arrive difficult. anywhere, I have to travel via caravan. So figure it the fuck out mm-hmm. or we're not going to your house. Listen, Sorry, Zach, I'll find listen, bro. Care. I'm not that guy, bro. You, you know, you know, I'm not that guy. But it would be nice, dude, if at, as I'm walking out of the airport barefoot, if there's some rose petals for me to walk onto as I go to your vehicle. That's all I'm saying, bro. This is some coming to America type shit. It's, it's on my bucket list. I you mean, know, my listen, wife's not, my wife's not gonna make that happen. If you can't get the elephants and and the camels, like a cheetah is okay. Like a cheetah and two hyenas. Uh, I mean, you want to mm. keep the hyenas on leash. By the way, they are they don't play well uh, at airports. See, Harley Quinn. So. Yeah, I want to need you guys to text me this list. It's it's getting out of control now. Plus, what, right. are you, what are you talking about? We'll have our people contact you. You want hyena? You want All hyenas right. for? <laughs> like, is he Harley Quinn? Harley Quinn has hyenas. Yeah. Who's Harley Quinn? Oh my goodness! Never mind. <laughs> Lost reference. <laughs> I didn't know she had hyenas. I thought she carried a baseball yeah. bat. She had really in the latest movie. She had hyenas. Yeah. Oh, nobody hyena. watched that. And then the la- in the latest that? movie, nobody watched ah. that. Maybe they did in Clarksburg, West Virginia. There, buddy. Wait, bro, why are you giving away this man's location live on the internet, dude? <laughs> they only. I don't. I don't. I don't live in Clarksburg. Theater. Yeah. Wherever Clark. No, I don't. Something. I don't live in Clarksburg. Yeah, Clark, dude. He, that's where you're real. flying into. Oh. It's, it's, he could be in Wit Pro, bro. You can't give out like details like that. He's you not know better, Pro, man. Calling in a fucking live, nationally broadcast <laughs> show. All right. Might be. You don't know. All right, Zach, get off the line. I have a ton of people want to talk right. about ketchup and mustard. All right. <laughs> Later. Be shuck. Be shuck said an Arab and the Jew in the hills of West Virginia. Yeah, bro. 
This is going to be some reality show shit. That's for damn sure. We're doing our best to make every one of these trips extremely odd. Yeah. By all means. All right. Zach, yeah, all... you wouldn't you want to you wouldn't believe the paperwork I had to fill out for you to fly in to Clarksburg. Yeah, to get, <laughs> get waivers, waivers signed. <laughs> you bro, wait with a, with a air... mayor with a mayor of that town be there. I feel like it's like that kind of sit, that kind of wait, place. Bro. Hey, wait till I arrive. This airport be like this is our first Arab traveler. <laughs> well, how do we handle this? They're gonna have like all TSA coming in from like all the other yep. airports around they West are. Virginia. Bringing them in, uh, we don't know how to. This is our first brown. Uh, uh, tra- well, how, what do we do here? What's what are the standard protocols here? I got, is it nude? Sir, how do we do I this? Got, I got David Caruso flying in. Motherfucker! So oh, nice. Gonna, nice. He's gonna take his sunglasses off, have a nice quip for you. Is there banjo oh, music? Is there a lot of banjo music? <laughs> Everywhere. That's, what, That's all we. All right. Do. This call is over. This call is done. <laughs> Get away. Great call, Zach. Go. Talk to you Go later. away. Oh, yeah, bro. You got a lot of shit to do to get ready for us, man. Get off the fucking phone. Jesus, man. All right. 229 area code. You're on with the loose cannons. What's up? Buttercup. 229. You're on with the loose cannons. You're on the penthouse. Tampa hotline. What's up? 229, bro. I got to take a mean piss right now. We need to hear from you Last quickly. Fucking chance. He got scared, dude. He got scared. I get it. What? I get it. Oh, whoa, whoa. What? What? Oh, I'm I'm here. Sorry, hey, I was on speaker. Couldn't hear you there for a second. Oh, hey, okay. uh, Sergeant Wash here. Uh, hey, What's just want to uh, tell everybody, yeah, I'm doing good. Hey, uh, you know what? Uh, th- there's a lot of Debbie Downers over here in the chat. You know, guys, mm-hmm. we got to remember this. We are in first place in the NFC South. First, first place. place. Yeah. Let's make we sure are. we get that number two. Carolina just fired their head coach today. He's gone. I think that that Boy. actually hurts us, though. I think that hurts us. I think Matt Rule. Mm, I, I, I kind of like Matt Rule to be there at all times because they're terrible with him. So they're going to be worse. And by the way, that's true. But I just don't think I don't everything. think they're going to be able to, to to switch their offense and defense over. And in, in what do we play? We play them in two weeks. They're not going to switch. I think it, it is. They're going to stick not, with the same team. Exactly. Anyway, yeah. they're not going to do that. Go ahead, Can you Sam. Stop real quick, there? while we're on Carolina, Sam, you know assholes like better than anybody. The owner of that team, enormous asshole, H- huge fucking asshole. Or what? No. No? I mean, I, I, I said that Matt Rule would be fired by week five in the offseason. I'm not sure how the fuck I nailed it, but I nailed it, which is mm. kind of weird. But I do not think that guy's an asshole. I would have fired Matt Rule after one game this season, to be honest. No, I'm not saying he's an asshole for firing Matt Rule. I'm saying in general, that guy's in a, it's just a p- complete piece of shit. I don't know him. I no? Mean, All right. Anyways, no Sarge, go ahead, bro. We just fucking hijacked your call. Continue. That's okay. That's all good. That's all good. They, I mean, and we, you saw what the Falcons did. They can run mm-hmm. the ball. Would be okay. You, if this is a passing league, if you can't pass the ball, uh, you're going to lose. Period. I don't care how many yards you get. Doesn't matter. And I hate to say this, but the Saints look a whole lot better without Jameis out there. So <laughs> that may be our only competition. But otherwise, no. Tampa, you know, they should be not worried about close games, but just worried about winning the winning the division. And going on from there. Yeah, I agree. If this, if I'm the Saints head coach, it's Taysom Hill 100 percent of the way. I think that's the only way they're going to win win football games because it isn't going to be with either of those quarterbacks. Great fucking call. Yeah, yeah Sergeant call. Wash coming in. We'll go to three one three area code. You're on with the loose cannons. You're on the Tampa, or you're on the penthouse Tampa hotline. What's up? <laughs> Couldn't get that out. Three one three. The ketchup's got us all fucked up, bro. That was we were downhill since the fucking ketchup call. 313 806. Well, hey, 313. Hose, what's up? That's Detroit, right? What's going on? How you guys what's doing? Up? What's, what's up, up, man? Good. Where are you calling from? First off, who, who is this? Okay, I'm uh, from uh, Dearborn, Michigan. Michigan, okay, okay. Okay. Is, is that where, off, eight, okay, that where eight, eight Miles filmed? Isn't that where Eight Miles filmed? Yeah, we're close by. We're about 20 minutes away yeah. from there. You guys like that, right? How I knew that. All right, go ahead, man. Your name, your. your, now, your, your about, wait, they had no. Winning that game. Okay. And, hey, if there's anybody that deserved that call, it's Tom Brady the GOAT. So I don't know why people are complaining. Mm. And the Buccaneers, they're in good place. They will make the playoffs and the Super Bowl, too. Mic drop. I like that, man. That's a great call. This guy just giving us the fucking uh, future. That was a great call. And Mike dropped a couple times there. It was kind of weird. Um... He yeah, the goat. The, the course, the goat deserves a call. The goat deserves every single call. 
Mm-hmm. He was he was mad that he had to even call in and remind us. It felt like, right? You get get that sense from him? Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, he saw he he noticed like a little bit of underlying Tom Brady slander. If you do that, by the way, on Twitter at all, if you even criticize his socks or anything like that, bro, get ready for it. They They're all out there. They're all waiting. All right. Well, it'll be the uh, I've got two callers. I'm gonna <clears> here. Plus, I know you gotta go do your laundry or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> What? Something, something really boring like that. Wow, bro. Oh my god. How do you know he ain't got some big big booty bitch just waiting for him to get off? You know what? Maybe. Maybe you gotta go hit that. I already house. we already know how he rolls, bro. Don't play this games be, here. This will be my last appearance on this show. Don't <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll go to the eight one three area code. You're on with the loose cannons, you're on the penthouse hotline. Turn your radio down. What's up? What's up, fellas? How y'all doing tonight? What's up, Jeremy? What's going What's up, Jeremy? on? Jeremy, what's happening? I'm about to, you already know who it is, Stink. You already know who it yeah, is. Yeah, man. You got the, you got a very distinct voice, bro. It's kind of like Snoop. When I hear your voice, min- instantly I know who it is. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. What's up, Dr. Pless? How you doing, buddy? Hey, what's up, Jeremy? Not much, man. Just glad we got the dub, you know. I'll take the dub, you know. Yeah. Heart was like fucking racing in that fourth quarter. But at the end of the day, we got the win. It was ugly. And hopefully, you know, that old line will open up more fucking holes, man. Because you got to run the ball. Because Brady cannot keep taking these fucking hits, man. With that shoulder injury, the last thing we need to do is lose Brady to a shoulder injury. And that's a wrap. I'm not saying Brady's a pussy, you know. He's been battling these injuries over the years, especially, you know, during the Super Bowl run with that MCL injury. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they got to run the fucking ball, man. If you cannot run that ball and, and take less pressure off Brady, it's going to be a tough ride. I know we got Pittsburgh, Carolina coming up, and hopefully they have a good game plan, you know, and get after the quarterback. You know, put that pressure on the rookie, and then if it's P.J. Walker the following week, get put that pressure on him too. Like I said, I was impressed with Logan Hall. I think he had a great game. I think mm-hmm. KTS definitely yeah. started showing up. Just got you know, just gotta get that <laughs> the run stop, you know, get that get that running that ground game stop because I know Najee Najee Harris, you know, luckily he hasn't been doing much, but it's probably a game he's gonna be circling to run the ball a lot. What do you think? Yeah. I mean it's one of those things, man. They're they're running the ball to protect their shitty fucking uh quarterback. Yeah, rookie play. rookie quarterback. And now they got the rookie in, not just Mitch Trubisky, now they got the rookie in, so they're going to lean Thank on God, I don't want to ever see Trubisky again, dude. The, the Bucks, I don't, I don't want to ever yeah. face that guy ever again. Uh, Bucks just got to make sure they don't get destroyed and at that point try to make the rookie beat you, which I don't, I'm not afraid of that. This team with Todd Bowles, it's, you know, rookies don't want to face this team in, in terms of the way they play. Yeah. And he's going to make it fucking hard. Todd's going to make it hard for any quarterback, let alone a fucking rookie. And taking away the run will be, I think, you know, hopefully they, they yeah. get it figured out. Plus, should be a, well, yeah, well, yeah, should be well, a hopefully. Yeah, I mean, hopefully Carlton Davis, you know, hopefully his injury is not serious. Hopefully something minor. You know, if he has to sit out, you know, a game or two, I'm okay with that. You know, I have trust in, you know, McCollum and D. Delaney, who has a lot of experience from last year to step in. Because, like I said, we're going to need these guys, to, you know, later on at the end of the season and going to the playoffs. And as far as Julio Jones goes, I mean, I'd say just put that dude on IR. Let him rest his knee. You know, we got Chris, we got Mike, Perriman hopefully will be back. You know, Julio Jones, I mean, I know Bowles said in his press conference today, you know, they want to be fully healthy, you know, and not just play one week and then be out for two. But I think with that knee, you know, with a partially torn PCL, I just don't think, you know, he should risk playing them now, especially with the next two games are very winnable when it comes to, you know, Pittsburgh. Yeah, it is kind of odd they didn't put him on IR. You know, I just don't understand why they don't do that. You know, let him rest his knee. And then when he's fully healthy, ready to go to the end of the season, that's when we'll really need him, you know, in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, if you watch him the Dallas game, they want him to play. I feel they want him to, yeah. they want him to play. They want him to get chemistry with the guys around him, I feel like. And mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like it's such a danger because he's still kind of practicing at the same time. So maybe I, I feel they're just not rushing him back but they don't want to put him on IR because I don't think you could just put him on IR and bring him back three weeks later so if they think it's less than that whatever that Four allotted weeks, right? you know whatever that allotted time period is then they're not going to put him on there and waste that spot because you don't know what could happen to another player who actually does need that spot mm-hmm. um plus correct me I think you only get one of those now or do you get two how does that shit work 
Um, you, you're talking about like practice squad. Uh, no, IR. How many that, guys can you no, use IR, that, IR, that, I, I that four week IR on? Uh, I don't think there's, I think there's only like two. I think it's like two. I don't think it's really, I'm not sure if there's a limitation on it. I know um, other teams have been using it. So maybe it's just two times. I'm not sure on that. I have to look that up. But um, Jensen, right now, Jensen I, on it too, don't they? Or they have that long term one for him. He's on the right. He's on the regular IR, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, That's he's it. just he's just on yeah, he's on IR. Um again, he's probably uh he can probably return. It's like it's a designator to return. You know, at the earliest you can come back is four weeks, but you can come back anytime. Oh. Um, you know, once they seem fit. So yeah, Julio I think is it's a week to week. It's just like Akeem Hicks. Like Akeem Hicks could have went on, you know, short term IR, but they didn't decide to do it. So yeah, I don't think it's necessary to put Julio on there yet. You know, just let it play out. Again, you don't need them right now. Let them rest and yeah. let them be a hundred percent. No, no, I agree. You know, at least yeah. let them rest. You know, don't rest. You know, put them out there. He's not ready. So I can't make sense why he didn't play. Yeah. You know, you know, yesterday it made sense. It's just some of these Bucks fans. You know, they have so much high expectation on this dude. But at the end of the day, this dude's only coming in to have a role to play, and hopefully he could be healthy when he, you know, when we use him in that role. Well, that's because we've been and, extremely know, lucky with pulling guys off the streets and then having them produce right away. It, you know, outside of Richard Sherman last year, who gave us his all as much as he could, you know, off the fucking couch. Um, you know, other guys we've added have actually shown and and you know done really well here. So I think that's what we were all expecting with him, especially since he looked so good in camp. But well. Yeah. It all. I feel like this will all just kind of gel, come back together. There was a couple seasons where in in New England where Tom and that Patriots team didn't look great, but when they needed to look good towards the end of the year and in the playoffs, they were fuck. They had it figured out. So maybe it's just one of those things, man. It's a new team. Yeah. By the way, Samer Northway TA in the chat a little while ago said somebody's watching the game at Penthouse again. Okay, so look, it's an away game that we are not going to be in town for. We're going to be in Pittsburgh, but. The penthouse watch party will still go on. So you go to tailgreeter.com, search loose cannons. It'll pop up as a watch party. Purchase your pass there. And again, it includes two drinks. It includes all you can eat, whatever food they have that day. Um, it's catered in. It's not from the actual steakhouse because that doesn't open until 6 p.m. But yes, you can absolutely watch it. We have the entire joint. So pack it up. Plus, you're in charge because we're not here. So yeah, you're in charge, um, plus. Yeah, I'm putting the oldest kid in charge right now. So you're, you know. Sam, for a first second, kind of explain how it works, bro. Like when you're in there watching football, the, the sound is on, you know, at, during the, during the, you know, during the game, are you, are you able to focus on watching the game? What happens like during breaks and stuff like that? Explain to people who don't, who don't have any concept of so, how incredible it is. So when the game is on, all the speakers and all the TVs are on the game. You hear everything mm -hmm. that's going on. All right. Yeah. The lovely penthouse pets are all seated. They could be seated in your lap. They could be seated next to you. They could be seated as a group in a little penthouse pet section, whatever they choose mm -hmm. and or whatever mm -hmm. you choose. And then when it goes to commercial break, the DJ brings the music up, turns the fucking volume completely off on the dumbass commercials that you ha are forced to watch during NFL broadcasts. Yeah. And then if you don't feel good about the play that just happened, did we punt the ball or maybe we only got – you know, a field goal instead of seven. You know what? Yeah. Reach in your pocket, take out a couple ones, maybe a five, maybe a 20. And you say to one of those lovely penthouse pets, can you make me feel a little bit better during this commercial break? And then the <laughs> next thing you know, they're on a fucking pole and they're fucking yeah. putting on a show for you to feel better. About you don't even need goal. to do that. They or go right the to, they go right there to entertain you during the, during the commercial they, breaks. You don't they, even need to, you don't need to do anything you don't, at all. You may not have to request They're there for it, you. But yeah. what I'm saying is that you can request it. But yeah. they're all there's and listen, like I said, we, the entire joint, so every pole, every stage, everything is loose cannons at that moment during that. Yeah, game. that's true. Plus, plus had three girls on three different poles at one point, just because he wasn't happy with the fact that we fumbled the ball. All right, I was, I, I totally agreed. I gave a couple twenties, participated in all that. It was beautiful. Yeah. And then, and then when the game comes back, music is turned off, game volume back, dude, and it's seamless. It's absolutely transitionally it seamless. It's beautiful. The place is gorgeous, by the way. Yeah, Absolutely, it's, yeah. It's it's, it's, it's top notch, man. It is Liquor a was nice great. Joint, yep. and then you know what? Girls have nowhere to sit because they have a shortage of chairs for some reason. And you know what? 
Make your lap available. Watch yeah. the next segment of the game with a beautiful woman on your lap. I mean, come on. Jonas, bring your wife, Jonas says bring he your needs girlfriend. video proof. Jonas, if I you mean, follow my Twitter feed, I, I posted quite a bit of video proof for the Saints game, which was probably the most relaxed I've been at watching a Saints game in a really long time. And I'm going to give all the credit to the penthouse. It's the hard. House. It's it's hard to. Um, yeah, that's right. I said it's hard to have your emotions just all over the place when you're watching yeah. the Saints game when you're at the penthouse because a lot of your yeah. blood is not in your head. It means in your head, it's just not in your head. So it you're you're more focused. I feel like it's more of a yeah. relaxing, enjoyable watching in like a, a football watching environment. It, it's yeah. It's perfect, I think honestly, I don't it think kind of gives back. you per, it gives you perspective. It's like can't go oh, back. It's just, it's just football. You look at that's... look at all the beauty the world has to offer. You know, and that's what really, that's what I learned. I, I actually learned something about myself when I nothing was there. Ma nothing made me feel yeah. better after we fumbled the football than a fat ass shaking in my face. Yeah. I think that's why we won. He won't be a, Northway says he won't be able to hear the clap because we'll be in Pittsburgh. Listen, there's plenty of clapping going on if you go to Penthouse, bro. Uh, plenty of clapping to go around. So that's I another reason you need to go there. I spread the clap through that Penthouse. Plus was there. Stank was there. He witnessed yeah. it. Yeah. But you know what? If you stand outside and you listen real closely, you might hear my clap from Pittsburgh. Just saying. You might be able to hear it. All right. Hey, why do you think Young Ho, who is money, by oh, the way, let's my talk about and my that. favorite kicker of all time, let's not not a buck, that. Young Ho, why do you think he missed that, that kick? <laughs> Samer was fucking reverberating through the fucking concourse, dude. Like, Young Ho did not know what to do with himself. It was the Push weirdest the, moment. That stadium was so Push quiet for this guy's line. field goal kick, right? And the lady yep. next to me was like, why are you clapping right now? And yeah, she I was, was the, not feeling it. I was the Although she person. unbuttoned her belt for you, so maybe she was feeling it. Later on in the day, that's right. So, <laughs> she did, she did. Very no nice. Jokes. So I was the only one standing up and clapping. It was kind of quiet in there. I legit was clapping. He missed the field goal, and I looked right at her and go, that's why the fuck I clap, man. Mm -hmm. That is why. And you and know that's what? that's when she undid her belt. I never seen him miss a field goal before. It was, it was. Me neither. Never yeah. seen it do it. Never seen it happen. I was shocked. Next thing Usually you know, we, shocked. Turn, money. We, we turned section 230 into the fucking penthouse after that. We did. Belts came off, shorts everywhere. It was awesome. I think the show's over again, and if it isn't, I'm gonna piss right here, right now. This live show, the show is basically over. Yet. <laughs> okay, good. Because hey, I got, I got a pee. Thank you so much for call or hanging all out right. with us, Plus, and everybody who called in. All these uh, very good calls tonight, except for the dude. I mean, maybe it was no a good ketchup call. fingers specifically. I'm not Great sure what call. you're doing with the ketchup and why you're dipping. Why not just drink it? I, I, we got to get a better understanding of that later on. Come at, <laughs> come hang out with ketchup. us one day and explain it to us in person, please. <laughs> yeah. um, everybody else in the chat, if you are not a member of the Loose Cannons channel, make sure you become one. It's less than like a coffee a fucking day or some shit. It's less than a, less than a cup of coffee. Like and subscribe member. right now. You get now. to use these badass new uh, these emojis that we have. And you also get some cool member perks, including discounts on our merch. And you get to see videos that come out before anyone else gets to see me, et cetera, et cetera. Plus, we love you. We're going to come do. to your house at some point and decorate that really boring office of yours because it looks like a shrink. Dude, I want to do that. Like it. Can we do that? And we're going to record it. Yeah. Stank, I'm going to send Stank nude to decorate your office. <laughs> All right? All right. Hey, Don't tell me with a good there. time. Wait, wait, wait. How do we, how do we follow Plus, though? Like, I'm, I'm taking, I, I'm taking oh, a yeah. vacation. Yeah, how do, how do we, if people want to know more about Pless and they want to, you know, watch that wall more than once a week, how can they just, find them? Just go to Real just go to Real Buckstock, uh, YouTube, Real Buckstock. Follow us on Twitter, Real Buckstock. Very simple. One click away and a lot of video content for your favorite football team and the Buccaneers. And actual Buckstock, not talking about ketchup and strip no clubs. Ketchup and stuff like that. Yeah, no? no ketchup talk. I don't know, no. man. We've exposed that man to no. you now. Now he's going to he's gonna be like, I'm going to go check he's out He's going to follow channel. your chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's going to be great. That's fine. We'll break down ketchup. We'll do a lot of different things there. So mm. I'm tuning in for that one. And uh, one last thing, one question here in the chat. Uh, why are ladies from Cali Bucks, why are ladies always getting into it with Samer? You know what? It's hard to escape the flirtatious ways. Cali sometimes. Bucks, you know the answer to that, dude. <laughs> They just want to you, flirt. You of all people know the answer to that. They just, uh, yeah, this may be Plus's last time on the show. I don't think Plus is ever coming back after this. But yeah, yeah, I'm taking a long vacation, guys. Hiatus. So. Yeah, hiatus. Yeah, that's not happening. You're coming back next week. See you then. Hey, go Bucks. <laughs>
I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche, five and a horse.